Now you might ask, well, what other aspects can have an impact if we are not motivated enough? In fact, there are a lot of other influence factors. For example, the number of arguments. This, for example, was shown in another study by Petty and Kachopo, which had the title The Effects of Involvement on Responses to Argument Quantity and Quality, Central and Peripheral Routes to Persuasion. And in this study, which was quite similar to the one we just talked about, students again were told, well, maybe next year there will be comprehensive exams in your major area. And another group was told, maybe in 10 years. And again, they were given weak and strong arguments. But this time, the peripheral factor was not the source of the policy statements, but it was the number of arguments because some participants were given only three arguments, whereas others were given nine arguments. And it turned out that when participants were not really motivated, the number of arguments had an impact even if these arguments were weak. So the group of participants who were given nine weak arguments were more convinced than the group of participants who were given three weak arguments. But when the students were told, well, this might be next year, the results were completely different. Nine weak arguments this time were regarded as really weak because in comparison to the other groups, the attitude towards these new exams was really bad. So if the participants were involved and really thought it through, they were clearly more influenced by the quality of the arguments. So there is no doubt that motivation and involvement are important for which route will be chosen, the peripheral or the central route to persuasion. But besides motivation, another factor is ability. Sometimes we are just not able to think everything through. We are not able to reflect about it because maybe we are tired or maybe we have low cognitive abilities or maybe the issue is just too complex. There are so many areas in life that are very complicated and it would take a lifetime to understand everything. So in these circumstances, of course, we rely on experts. Another situation in which we don't have the ability to reflect about everything and in which we are vulnerable for influences of the peripheral route is when we are distracted. So, for example, you are sitting in front of the telly and you are not really listening to the advertisement because you are too busy to write messages on your smartphone. Well, under these circumstances, according to the elaboration likelihood model, it doesn't make sense to present an advertisement in which you discuss all the pro arguments for your product. No, you better have a speaker with a nice voice. Maybe he is prominent and very popular. And in the background you have pleasant music because these are the factors that under these circumstances could have a much better impact. Another factor which is important for the decision central or peripheral route of persuasion is a personality factor which is called need for cognition. Some people have, have the trait that they really like to reflect about everything, about difficult issues. They really like to think hard about it. That's what makes them happy. And obviously these people are not that easy to persuade via the peripheral route. On the other hand, people with low scores on the personality trait need for cognition are supposed to be more easily influenced on the peripheral route by factors like 
the expert status of the communicator. We already heard about this. The number of arguments, that's what we already heard as well. The position of the arguments, that's interesting. When we are not so motivated or not so able to think everything through, the position of the argument, is it the first argument or the last argument, can have an impact. For the first argument, there can be primacy effects. And for the last argument, there can be recency effects. Another factor can be the credibility of the information source. Is it just uh, the information written on a blog on the internet or is it a publication in a very high-ranked scientific journal? Like, for example, in psychology, the journal Psychological Science. Also important for the peripheral route can be the information whether almost all other people believe the same. So at the time of Galileo Galilei, for example, all people were convinced the Earth is in the center of the universe and the sun is circling around it. If you're not motivated or if you don't have the ability to think about it, you will say, everybody knows it. Come on, Galileo, what, what's going on with you? Everybody says it. And now you want to tell me the sun is the center? Come on, this is stupid. Another influential aspect on the peripheral route can be the voice of the speaker, but also the speaking rate. For example, if a scientist speaks very fast, it seems like he knows what he's talking about. And also his nonverbal behavior can have an impact if we are on the peripheral route. For example, is he avoiding eye contact or maybe due to another camera perspective, now suddenly a manuscript became visible and suddenly what the scientist is telling us is no longer that impressive. Because, hey, he's just reading from a manuscript. Everybody can read from a manuscript. The last point, of course, there are also other points, but the last point I want to mention is pleasant music, which is, of course, often used in advertisements. Now you might say, well, isn't it quite sad that we are, when we are tired or if we are not motivated, that we are influenced by such superficial factors, unimportant factors, because decisions, for example, who we are going to vote for in the next election, what car we are going to buy, these decisions should be rational. They should be based on pro and contra arguments and not based on the looks or voice of the communicator. Well, the good news is that attitude changes which are achieved via the peripheral route of persuasion are less stable, less resistant and they are a worse predictor for behavior. So maybe a politician might be able to persuade us via his good looks and his popularity and his nice voice. And if we get asked, would you vote for him? We might say, yeah, why not? One week before the actual election or one day before the actual election, we really tend to go back to the central route because now it gets serious. Now we really have to think about it. And if his arguments are really bad, if his policy statements are not convincing at this point, we are still able to change our opinion.